Hello and welcome to the Daily Roundup. I am Aditi and today we're bringing to you a glimpse of some of the latest and most important stories we report about here at NewsClick. Teachers and students across the country are concerned about the new guidelines for women's study centers issued by the UGC. While the guidelines do not explicitly imply the elimination or reduction of paid positions for faculty, academics are suggesting that the implication is inherent. The new guidelines may mean a drastic cut in annual fund allocation, ranging between rupees 12.5 lakh to rupees 40 lakh depending on the type of center according to the memorandum submitted to the UGC by Indian Association for Women's Studies. While some universities and colleges themselves pay and sustain women's study centers, Many are dependent on the UGC for funding. If the UGC pulls out this funding, it could mean the end for many of these centres, their faculty and students. Less than a month before the Narendra Modi government went lame duck, a controversial telecom company's rupees 2,818 crore bid for the supply of high-tech equipment that would go toward installing and commissioning of the Indian Army's sensitive communication network was reportedly accepted by BSNL, the tendering agency, although it had previously been rejected for a similar project almost two years ago. Investigations by NewsClick have revealed that Delhi-based HFCL won the bid after several tender clauses were said to have been diluted or bypassed by BSNL. At least three other competitors, including Bharat Electronic Limited, a public sector undertaking of Ministry of Defence, ITI Limited, a department of telecommunications PSU, and Sterlight, are learned to have shot off letters to BSNL bosses, citing major violations of tender clauses in the eBid. Representations and mails were also sent to the Army's Directorate General of Signals for their intervention as the evaluation process was grossly violated. Communist Party of India Marxist CPIM General Secretary Sitaram Yachuri recently spoke with NewsClick about the dangers posed by the BJP to the country. He also discussed CPIM's key campaign plank in the upcoming elections and the party's strategy in Kerala and in West Bengal. Let's take a look. Mr. So Yachuri, could you just start by uh, talking about what is the central plank? of the campaign of the CPIM during the coming elections. What is the key message the party is taking to the voters? Well, the key message right now is that this government should be removed from office. And that is essential, according to us, because on every single foundational pillar of our constitution, there has been a severe assault and that assault continues to grow. And if they continue to remain in office, using the government and the authority, they are mounting this assaults. Right. Assaults on secular democracy, assaults on federalism, assaults on social justice, assaults on your economic self-reliance and the livelihood of the people. All, all these uh, uh, essential points are under severe attack. Therefore, the first priority, we have given ourselves three slogans. One, to ensure the defeat of the BJP and its allies. Two, to strengthen the CPM and the left in the parliament. This is important in order to influence the policy direction of the government. And three, to ensure that an alternative secular government assumes office at the center. So for these three, uh, to achieve these three objectives, our general practical approach would be to maximize the pooling of the anti-BJP votes. That is it for today. To follow these and many more important stories, visit our website www.newsclick.in. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. Thank you for watching.